Let's scrutinize a pattern right now on something called relative compression. Speaking of big box analyzers, they used to do this. In the last years they, they were out there, they would let you crank the engine and they would prevent ignition from allowing the engine to come to life and would look at the current draw and give you numbers that represented about what the compression would be percentage-wise, 100% being perfect compression and 50% being, you'll say, half compression on your engine. You can do the same thing with amperage. In fact, some techs will use voltage because they're very similar. Remember Ohm's Law, they're relational. Here we used a big 600 amp amp clamp plugged into a lab scope. We disabled ignition or fuel, you pick. I like the fuel, then I don't have to worry about cylinder wash. But you disable the engine so it crank, 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 cranks for a few seconds and you look at the current draw. If you wanna use a second trace, uh, so that you can see which cylinder is which, you know, in a firing order, something that's triggered off a number one injector, spark plug, whatever, that's fine. But initially, you wouldn't even spend the time to do that. Just look at the current draw. Now, what we're seeing here on a good engine, this is a good relative compression test. First, we see the big spike going up. That's hundreds of amps of starter inrush current. That's normal. Then it kind of tapers down and it calms down. And then you see a pattern that looks like what I've circled there. You see how it looks very rhythmic. There's no dropouts periodically. It's just very consistent. Every time you see it bump up, that's increased starter draw amperage to make top dead center compression on that particular cylinder. Let's say you had a hole in the piston or a burnt valve. You wouldn't be having much compression and you wouldn't need much amperage, as much amperage to turn the engine at that particular point. Now we could put a compression gauge in all the holes, but you'll, you guys all know that's easier said than done on a lot of engines. Why not do something super fast to get the same diagnostic result, save you a lot of time, make more money? So let's look at what a pattern looks like if you had, let's just say, a burnt valve on number one cylinder. It looks something like this. You still have the starter inrush, but now we're going to have, instead of rhythmic, four bumps, four bumps, four bumps, we have one and then we have it slow down, or actually the current draw drops down and the will, engine will slow down a bit too, possibly, or speed up, I should say. Then you have four or three good-looking pulses of current, and then another place where there should have been a pulse of current, that's the cylinder, number one, over and over again, that's not drawing as much current as the others when it's turned to do TDC compression. So then when you see this, this is a 10-second test, guys. When you see this, now you're justified to pull that plenum, whatever, out of your way and put in your compression gauge. Or if you're advanced tech, you're probably already putting a pressure transducer in the hole and looking at a pattern for the actual compression stroke itself.